everybody today in this kind of rainy, kind of almost day, you know, we need the rain, oh, we've had a lot of rain this week, and I think we're going to get more maybe as it goes on, it's supposed to get hot at the end, did you hear the forecast for next Saturday, like 99 degrees or something like that, my goodness gracious, my, I don't, my cat and dogs won't know what to do. But anyway, we're welcome. Welcome everybody today. We're glad you're here. And especially those that might be here for the very first time, we're glad you're here. And please come back and see us again. We're a pretty good church. You know, we're friendly. We'll shake your hand if we can. And we'd like to take a record if you're here. Fill out that response card in the pew ahead of you and drop it on the table, hand it to the pastor or one of the ushers. We'd be glad. Today is uh, ladies helping out with the ushering this morning. You might have noticed that when you came in. We're glad they're doing that. They do it every fifth uh, Sunday, and we really appreciate them doing it. Um, hey, have you heard, uh, how can you tell if, if you have a lazy dog? Hmm. He only chases parked cars. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway. Uh, maybe you, I, I know I got a lazy dog, squirrels, but he never catches them. But anyway, you know, <clears throat> hey, this week, well, we got a lot going on. First of all, tonight, no evening uh, programs at all. And during the week, Tuesday, Wednesday, we got men's Bible study. We got prayer meeting on Wednesday. Uh, next Sunday, don't forget, we have August the 7th. That's communion here at the church. And looking at a few other things, attention uh, vacation Bible school workers, you have a appreciating dinner, appreciation dinner for you on Tuesday, August the 16th. Uh, we also, our prayers go out for Ukraine. Keep that in mind. And Glen Allen Elementary School, don't forget they need supplies. So keep that in your prayers. Okay, now let's prepare our hearts for worship through the praise team.
remind us that we only, not only praise God when things are good, but we praise him in the storm.
Thank you, Mr. Steve. Indeed, great words of scripture put to music. Thank you all for being here this morning as we gather in the Lord's house to worship him. We're here today also to remember others and what they're going through. And sometimes it's pleasant and sometimes it's not so pleasant. We all know that's life. Today, these beautiful flowers here are given by the Houston family in honor of Anna Laura, who turned the ripe old age of 19 yesterday. So her last year of teenagedom, and Anna Laura has been, some of you know, and you've written to her and encouraged her, she's been heavily involved in various ministries this summer. So we want to continue to pray for Anna Laura. I have a good feeling that she's got Christian vocational ministry in her future in some capacity. And as we think about people being so young, these people were probably not 19, but maybe about nine when they got married. John and Joan Lee are going to celebrate their 67th wedding anniversary this Saturday. So congratulations to them. Great. As we look to prayer concerns, just a few updates on for you. Daryl Collins, uh, Patsy's husband, Susan's dad, uh, needs special prayer. Daryl is uh, a patient now over at Memorial Regional, and he's in room 2288. Uh, Daryl has been diagnosed with not only uh, COPD, but also AFib and congestive heart failure. So he has a number of things going on in his life right now for his health's sake. And I'll ask you to remember Daryl and all of the family much in your prayers during this time. Janet Bedwell, of course, this is one of Beth Waldron's daughters. Some of you know Janet. I um, want to continue to pray for her, too. She's had some heart issues and has been on some medication and was hospitalized. So let's pray for, for Janet. And then uh, Irvin Vesley, Jr., you know, we've been praying fervently for Irvin. Um, just learned from Donnie that uh, things don't look good now. Um, he's had a feeding tube, but they may, looks like may not continue that. And... Um, don't know whether he'll make it much longer or not. We just pray that the Lord's will be done. I know that's what Sister Shelby is praying for, truly, as hard as it is to pray that way, we must, and she's praying for God's ultimate will to be done in Irvin's situation. So thank you for continuing to remember Irvin and all of those family members, um, his son and two daughters and everybody in the family as well. And then Danny Journey, we give praise that he got through his... Uh, heart surgery on Monday well. He got home late, uh, well, the next day, actually. And then uh, we, Shelby, I mentioned her a while ago, with her broken arm. Uh, unfortunately, she can't start therapy until about the 18th of August. So she's got a little weight on that. But thankfully, it looks like no surgery is going to be necessary. Wayne King, who's struggled with his hip and back, uh, cannot start therapy, physical therapy, until the 18th of August as well. So let's pray for Wayne that this new medicine he's on might be of help to him more than the former medicine he had. Margaret Martin, you know, we've been praying much for her. Margaret's amazing, 97 years of age. But uh, Margaret is going to go ahead and give it the old college try. She's going to undergo three radiation treatments this coming week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, they're scheduled. And the hope would be in prayer that Perhaps this might shrink that tumor or mass a little bit um, so that they, she can um, live a little longer and maybe help her to get a potential um, uh, stent in there that they've been wanting to do. Sharon Meyer, unfortunately, has had some setback in the last uh, few days. She's kind of feeling like she was a couple of weeks ago with very, very, very weak. Uh, her son, Mark, who lives in this area, he and his family have been looking out for her. Let's keep Sharon in our prayers. And then Leslie Wright, uh, you know, she went through her breast cancer surgery. Uh, unfortunately, Friday, I mean, this is just the way things go. They, she knew radiation was in her future, but after meeting with the, uh, to the, with the surgeon, it looks like that she'll have to undergo chemotherapy as well. So chemo and radiation for Leslie. They just don't want that to come back, of course. Uh, let's pray for her in the days ahead. And she's going to be scheduling a visit with the oncologist very soon. Obviously, we want to continue to remember the Coggan family and the death of Mary. Pray for all of those dear ones. And I think we've had some flowers here. Uh, 
around uh, from the funeral service, and we're thankful for the ways that they've shared uh, with us. Again, so many folks to be remembering in prayer and many others on our prayer list and some on your hearts today as we lift them to the Lord. I would ask, too, that we keep our country and our world with all of our issues, uh, not just political, but so many other issues that we need to address and that we as Christians would be strong enough to stand up and to speak out on issues that are uh, of biblical nature, that we, meet, that we need to be sure that we stand for Christ, right? We stand for Christ. Yes, we, most of us, are citizens, yes, of the United States of America, by all means. We're very thankful for that. But first and foremost, we are citizens of the kingdom of God. And we need to take that with all seriousness. And I'm going to touch on that a little bit in the message that God has given me to speak today as well in terms of what we need to be doing in the, for the sake of others. May God bless us in that way. Let us pray. Heavenly Lord, we thank you so much for an opportunity to gather once again. As we come together today, may we stay ever focused upon you and you alone. May we understand today that we're all frail and we fall short of the glory that you've set before us. But at the same time, you love us so much and you're right there to pick us up when we fall and fail. Help us, Father, to stay true to you, not only in a worship hour like this, but certainly throughout the remainder of this week. And here we are gathered on the first day of the week to remember just what happened on the true Lord's Day. And that is the resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for that hope and hope eternal because of the overcoming of death. Lord, we know that we as sinners deserve death. We break the law, we sin, therefore death is the penalty. But we also know that your son, Jesus, paid the price, paid the cost, the extreme, ultimate sacrifice of giving his one only life. And you gave your one and only son. But Lord, you didn't let that life lay in the grave. You raised it. And Father, you, we know that because of Jesus being raised and now ascended at your right hand, interceding on our behalf, that we too have that assurance that we will be raised, that we will experience glorified bodies in heaven one day. But until that time comes, we have much to do. Help us to be faithful in our day-to-day -day responsibilities, civil, but most importantly, to you in a spiritual way. May we stay focused on things above and not be consumed by things of the earth. But Lord, help us to be those followers of your son Jesus that we need to be. May we be your disciples in every regard. Keep us ever in your care so that we might, in turn, help care for others. All this in Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. You all may notice that there are a few decorations still out this morning. There's a purpose in the pine, I promise, and they will be gone by next Sunday. But I, let, I took a few, I did a special activity for the children in their um, activity packs this week. Um, they're to keep them pictures of all of the items and they have to find them but it's meant to be a visual reminder not just for the children but for all of us that the truth that the children learn and we as adults who volunteer learn during vacation bible school even though we pack those decorations away and we pack every remembrance of vacation bible school away in in closets and rooms in trash cans <laughs> some of it that's where some of it goes um the truths that are learned and taught during that time never go away. And there are times when we have to seek God to have that remembrance, to remember the things that we were taught, the truths that we learned, and bring those back so that they can serve us when we most need them. And so that's really, a, it's a visual reminder for us all. For Vacation Bible School, we had a great week. I don't know about you guys who served, but I thought it went very smoothly. We didn't have a bunch of hiccups and 
and everything ran well. Uh, we changed the time a little bit, so that was, um, I think that helped. But um, I was just gonna pretty much give you numbers, and I think you'll see what the kids learned this week, and the adults too, um, as we made waves. They're, we're gonna have a video, and that will speak more than I will. Uh, but we had overall 94 participants. Out of those 94, the adult class attributed for about 23. These are averages. Um, and then the volunteers that served, we had 37 volunteers total and 34 children and middle school students. So if we want to play that video, you will see now what they learned about what it means to make waves. HBC BBS 22, here we are. Our theme, Making Waves. I'm here with the one and only Pastor Frank, who's going to get us started. Pastor Frank, what does it mean to you to make waves? Oh my goodness, as I think about making waves, beyond just going to the beach, I think about how impactful we can be toward others and showing them Christ in our lives and the way we live. And so that's why I'm excited about this week, thinking about from the very young to the seniors, we can talk about that very theme of let's make a difference in our world for Jesus. Indeed we can, so let's go and see what our other participants have to say. All right. It means to make good decisions in the environment. To make an impact. To me, it means going out, telling everyone else about God and his love, and inviting them to our church, inviting them to take part in Bible studies, and just helping them to know how life can be so good, knowing God is with us. It's having fun. Uh, to make changes, good changes to others. I think it means that you put something out in the world that's positive and good and then it continues to spread to all the people that it touches. They like sounds of waves to tell people about God. So you do something for one person and then they do something for another and it spreads and spreads. Spread the word about God. Maybe like make a big impact in your community. To me, making waves really means trying to love people like Jesus would love them. Seeing them as people who are loved by God and showing them kindness. To help God. Well, first of all, you just splash someone with kindness and then they're soaked in love. And that'll hopefully help them to do better things. It means to spread God's love everywhere. Well, to me, I believe it means spreading the word of Christ and influencing people's lives. Just always be kind to others so that they will be kind in return, treat others the way you want to be treated. To be kind to people and help poor people. If you do something kind for one person, they'll do something kind for another and it'll keep going on and on. You have to be kind and sharing and respect others. Well, Hutton, BBS 22 is in the books and it looks like we have some great opinions and some great thoughts on how to make some waves. But you know what? We're not done yet, are we, Tanya? We're not. We've got some great activities where we'll be making some more waves in August. Check your bulletin out and come on out for some great activities with our children in August. And until then, go make some waves. <laughs> Not only did we make waves during Bible school and make waves in our own community, but God was awesome this week in that we are going to be making waves around the world. Our missions offering surpassed anything we've done before. And we, oh, we have a little faith by the middle of the week we were going, mm, how are we doing? But by the end of the week, we were up to $2,732 and change. Our children and adults um, bought sustainable items to support Send Relief, and Send Relief is a joint mission project partnership between the North American Mission Board and the International Mission Board to serve families that are vulnerable uh, around the world, both here in the States and abroad, to um, help in crises, support as they are doing in Ukraine and other areas in the world. And so our little ones uh, showed us all up by buying 55 fish, but those 55 fish actually equals 550 fish per family. We have 40, we have 100 chickens were purchased, uh, 24 weeks of baby formula, 12 weeks of providing food for a family of five, 
14 weeks uh, for 14 seed packets, which will go to families to start businesses, uh, their own gardens and produce business. And the adults helped us buy two plus farms. And when we buy the farms, that means we bought the cows, the pigs, the chickens, the lambs, the, um, the goats, the fish, the seeds. And so we are only $165 short of having three farms. So thank you for your generosity this week. We appreciate it. And we actually have a short video from Sin Relief. Hi, Hutton Baptist Church. This is Josh Benton with Sin Relief. I want to take a minute to say thank you. Thank you so much for giving to Sin Relief during VBS. Your gifts are going to make a huge difference for families in North America and all over the world. The gifts that you gave will include things like chickens, fish, food boxes, and seeds that will help families in need have food to eat. For example, in a West African school for children with special needs, they received chickens recently. Through that, they were able to teach kids how to raise chickens for food for their family, but also to teach them how to earn a living to help support themselves. The best part of all of this is that those gifts are a way that allows missionaries to share the gospel with people in those communities. So thank you again for meeting needs and changing lives. I must say, I got choked up singing that song today as I reflected upon it, realizing the host of Christians throughout the United States and throughout the world worshiping in one accord this morning, praising God, saying we do stand for Jesus Christ. And this is how they're going to know it's by our love. Amen. Our love will be extended after the offering again.
giving you the opportunity, if you're so able, to contribute to the Reinhardt Guest House. Kathy will tell us more about that. Father, we thank you for our gifts that you have enabled us to give. We thank you for our tithes and offerings, and we do give them back to you. Thank you for providing for all of our resources. May we never lose sight of what we have, and may we truly express our love through the giving of not only our uh, financial resources, but our time and, and talents and expertise and whatever you've granted us to have, to share it with all, not only those in the church, but well beyond. May we be lighthouses to the community and to this world. Thank you, God, for this time together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. was started with the Reinhardt Guest House. And the Guest House provides accommodations for families who live more than 30 miles away who have come into town to support their family member who is in residence at St. Mary's Hospital. Um, the items go for the families to be able to purchase food when they're here, uh, to assist them to provide snacks as they come and go from uh, the Guest House. And we recently purchased 10 recordable bears for the family members to use for members that, for family members in the ICU to send special love messages. So as we, June plays this morning, if you brought an item or if you have a, contra, a financial contribution or a gift card, if you would bring it this morning and place it here at the altar, we'll probably put them over here on the steps as much as possible. Um, these will be taken to the guest house this week. And as always, they are most appreciative of your thoughtfulness, your prayers, and your kindness. Now is the time that we invite our children that are sec uh, kindergarten through second grade to exit for children's worship. So if you'd like to follow me out the back doors, we'll have children's worship. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you all so much. Sam and the choir, I love it. Good stuff. You know, I was telling you all recently about one of my pet peeves is those who don't know how to count back change. And uh, so this week, uh, one of the, the uh, McDonald's folks I've gotten to know pretty well, he's pretty good at change. I, I respect him. But I was telling him, I said, I'd heard something the other day, and I don't really believe it, but I heard it. And that's what I told him. I said that 99% of people are pretty good at basic math. I thought that was kind of high. So I told him that. I said, 99% of people are pretty good at basic math. He said, well, I don't know. I think I'm among the other 2%. So. Some of you remember Kojak, right? Telly Savalas. He always had it in his mouth. Yeah. Who loves you, baby? <laughs> Who loves you, baby? That's where in a sense, came from this week. Except I changed one word. It's who needs you, baby? Who needs you, baby? You know, he'd always say that to a criminal who was being hauled off to jail, right? Who loves you, baby? Kind of cynical there. Rubbing salt in the wound and all those things. But we asked that question today. Seriously, who needs you? Who needs you? Darla Phillips has led us a couple of times on these occasions for in as much days in our missions efforts. And those always meant a lot to me. And of course, in as much is something that comes from the King James Version here in Matthew 25. In as much as you have done it unto the least of these, my brethren, you've done it unto me. I'd like to read for us this morning from Matthew 25, beginning at verse 31. When the Son of Man comes, and of course Jesus speaking here, when the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the angels with Him, then He will sit on His glorious throne. Before Him will be gathered all the nations, and He will separate them one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And He will place the sheep at His right hand, but the goats at the left. Then the King will say to those at His right hand, Come, O blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you. From the foundations of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see thee hungry and feed thee? Or thirsty and give thee drink? And when did we see thee a stranger and welcome thee? Or naked and clothe thee? And when did we see thee sick or in prison and visit thee? And the king will answer them, Truly, I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these my brethren, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me, naked, and you did not clothe me, sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they will answer, Lord, when did we see thee hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister to thee? And then he will answer them truly, I say to you, as you did it not to one of the least of these, you did it not to me. And they will go away into eternal punishment but the righteous into eternal life. The Lord's words. Praise God for them. And may they have meaning to us today. You know, I'm kind of glad that it was so clear-cut to Matthew here. As Matthew recorded this for us, it was so clear-cut. He continues to draw these lines and has no doubt about who is on what side. He has no questions it's all pretty simple to him. Feed the hungry. Give the thirsty something to drink. Clothe the naked. Welcome the stranger. Care for the sick. Visit the prisoner. He's just so sure. He's so clear. But really, that's not been my experience in life. 
I wish it were as easy as that, going through a checklist and categorize people as either a sheep or a goat. Those who cared for the least of these and those who did not. But it's not that easy for us, is it? Let's begin today by defining our audience, shall we say. Who needs your baby? Once again, the other day, I ran across uh, another one of my frequent stops is Walmart. You know, you go to McDonald's, you got to go to Walmart. So this is one of the intersections near Walmart. And I saw this young fella. And I say young, he was probably in his late 20s. And he had a sign that said, needing work and abused. And I went closer to him, got out of the car. Well, I didn't get out of the car. I was in the car and pulled up next to him. That's where I was stationed at the light, which I know that's providential. And so I gave him some money. And then I recognized him as the same guy that I had seen a few weeks before. And that time I had passed by on the other side. So was I a sheep this time? Righteous? Blessed by the Heavenly Father? Bound for eternal life? I don't know. But what about that last encounter when I passed by on the other side? Was I a goat? Accursed? Bound for the eternal fires of punishment? I don't know. I just don't think it's as easy as categorizing ourselves as either a sheep or a goat. The reality is, in a sense, we're both. I bet each of you has a story similar to mine. A time when you fed, clothed, visited, cared for one of the least of these. And another time when you drove past, looked away, or pretended not to see the man or woman holding a sign asking for food or work or other kind of help. I could give you a lot of reasons why I did what I did. Why I helped one day but not the other. I might wonder whether he's scamming me or maybe the better question is whether I'm scamming him or scamming God. The least of these always seems to have a way of revealing to us most profoundly the truth of who we are and what our life is all about. They do that so much more clearly and directly than than do those I consider to be perhaps an equal to me. Or those who are above me. What is it about that? Well, the first question today and our first point of two is this. So who are the least of these? Who needs you, baby? Real Christians are known as Christ's disciples by their love for one another. That's how they will know us, by our love, right? Jesus gave that as a great commandment to His disciples. And therefore, this text, it, it's not a call to social justice or deeds of mercy or random acts of kindness among the poor of the world. What it really is, is a call to stand with Christian brothers and sisters in need. It is a call to help the single Christian mother buy glasses for her 14-year-old son. It's a call to visit the older Christian widow in the nursing home. It's a call to pay the mortgage for a brother who's struggling, has lost his job. It's a call to identify with poor and persecuted Christians in North Korea and the Middle East. It's a call to be the church. That's what this is about. It is a call to be the church. The least of these, you see, they're in all of our lives, every one of us. They don't always fit our stereotyped images. Sure, it might be the guy on the street corner asking for a handout. It might be a welfare mother asking for food or the guy who just got out of prison again. Sometimes, though, it's one who lives under the same roof as me or sits across the table from me. And it's not always just about physical needs. 
the least of these also have emotional and spiritual needs. The least of these are in all of our relationships. It could be your spouse who's struggling in some manner. There are people over whom we have some sense of power now and control. Think about that. They're the ones who have less resources and options than do we. They're the ones overwhelmed by life and underwhelmed by support. They're the ones who feel they're hanging on by a thread and they look at us as if we're holding the scissors. They're the ones we can do what we want to with and really not worry about their response. They're ones we threaten or intimidate simply because of who we are, what we have, or what we can do. And maybe we never see ourselves that way, but we really should. That we can be actually intimidating factors to others. So what is our response going to be? Who are the least of these in your life? Some are anonymous. Some might be sitting right next to or close to you this morning in this very room. In the second place, disciples of Jesus... That's we Christians. Disciples of Jesus should want to make a difference in the lives of others. I believe that we all want to make a difference. We want to make a difference in the life of another, in the world or in the church. And maybe that's why we sometimes struggle with our decisions and choices that we make. It's the reason we ask guidance from others. It's the reason we pray for God's will. Deep down, we really do want to make a difference. We want to do what's right. Well, I have some good news for you. And I have some bad news. The good news is that you don't have to try to make a difference. You can quit trying. You already are making a difference. Every single one of you is making a difference. I'm making a difference. Now here's the bad news. I don't know what kind of difference we're making. We oftentimes don't know. The people gathered for judgment here in today's gospel message. They have no idea what kind of difference they're making. They're just going on about their lives. One cared for the least of these and the other didn't. They seem oblivious to the consequences or effects of their actions. In fact, if you notice, that both, shall we say, the sheep and the goat, they ask the same question. What was the question? When did we see you? When did we see you? Now, I don't want to literalize this story. I don't want to make it into a search for the least of these, so we can be helpful and caring and get into heaven. Let's not start counting and keeping score of how many people we helped and how many we passed by and overlooked or said no to. How do we go about measuring that anyway? Do we need a 70% maybe to pass? Are we plotted on a bell curve? Do we just total up the two columns at the end of our life and see which is greater? Cared for or didn't care for? I just don't believe that's what today's story in the gospel message here of Matthew is all about. 
That's too easy. We already know. We already know we should help and care for one another. That's a given. As a follower of Christ, we know that. But this story, it names the reality in which we live. It's a reality that pulls us in different and sometimes opposite directions. It's a reality in which we're, we often even contradict ourselves. It's a reality in which we always have choices before us. And what we choose always makes a difference, for good or bad. It will always matter and will always make a difference in someone's life. What's being said in this story is that there are two ways. We are pulled by God in one direction and in our humanity pulled by in another or we could see it as a conflict and contradiction, really, between our inhumanity and our humanity. Another way would be to say that we live in the light and follow a path of light, and that we also, though, live in the darkness at times and follow that path. It's never just one or the other. It's always both. If we're really honest with ourselves if we look deep within, we will see our humanity and our inhumanity. We will see both our light and our darkness, our divinity and our humanity. These are not choices that live outside of us. They live inside each and every one of us. How we choose begins to set a, a trajectory or a, a direction for our lives. I don't believe that any of us get to that final place, whatever it is and however we understand it, overnight. It doesn't happen overnight. It's not a one-time event or a single decision. It's a series of choices. The king here sitting on the throne of His glory, simply names what is and what He sees. What do you see when you look at your life? What are the least of these showing to you? One day there was a, a good and rich man, and he noticed the miserable conditions in which a certain poor carpenter was living. He decided to help the poor man, and so he commissioned him. He commissioned him to build a beautiful house. He told the carpenter, I want this house to be ideal. Use only the best materials. Employ only the best workers and spare no expense. The rich man informed the carpenter that he was going on a journey, and he hoped the carpenter would complete the house before his return. Naturally, the carpenter saw this as an opportunity where he could profit. As he skimped on materials and hired inferior workers and covered their mistakes with paint, the carpenter wound up making a pretty good profit. Later, the rich man returned from his journey, and the carpenter brought him a key to this house, and the one that he had been hired, of course, to build. The carpenter even claimed that he followed the rich man's instructions on building materials, quality, and the best of workers. The rich man handed him the key back and told him that the house he had built was for himself and his family. Bottom line for me here is this. 
We can't control what people do with what we share with them. But I don't ever want that to keep us from sharing. God only calls us really to one thing. And that is obedience. Obedience. Leave the success, leave the results to Him. He can handle that. He calls us to be obedient. What if we approached every person, every place, every circumstance, every choice as if we see Christ? We see Christ. And if we don't, If we can't see Christ, what if we approached every person, every place, every circumstance, every choice as if Christ sees us? Ah, we know He does. Either way, you see, there's a seeing taking place. What if we allowed those seeings to push us deep into ourselves to uncover, rediscover, or maybe even discover for the first time the light, the very light that is who we most truly are. And in that light, we make our next choice. So who needs you, baby? Who needs you, baby? In a real sense, Everyone does. Everyone does. And we all need Christ. We all need Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ. God's only Son and our only Savior. I love that hymn. Let others see Jesus in you. Let others see Jesus in you. Keep telling the story, be faithful and true. Let others see Jesus in you. May it be so. Father, as we hear your word today, As we consider the message of the morning, may we realize that we do have a great work to do. As long as we have life and breath on this earth, we are called to be there for others. Yes, first to the church. How important it is that we be together as your church. But then there's a great big world out there, and part of it is right here in our community. Lord, whether it's helping those who come with loved ones have to stay at St. Mary's Hospital and are privileged to stay there at the Reinhardt Guest House and some ways we can tangibly help them. Or maybe someone on the street corner. Or perhaps it's someone in our community who may live in a decent house, but they're lacking food. Or just so many, so many concerns all around us. You know them all. And I just pray, O oh God, that you would make each and every one of us more faithful to look creatively each day at what we can do. Perhaps it's not financial because we may not have those means, but maybe there is something we can do because of our mobility and other ability. Guide us to that, truly. Others need us. We need need others and we all need you in jesus name we pray amen oh jesus i have promised we're going to sing and as we're standing and singing that song together it may be that you'd like to come forward today open invitation just express something in terms of your own life, decision that you feel like you need to make this morning. 
a decision for Jesus Christ. Perhaps you want to give your life to Him. Accept Jesus as your Savior, your personal Savior. You've heard the gospel message. He went to the cross for you. He died for your sins, died on your behalf to save you from sin. Just like our three baptismal candidates said before they entered the waters last week. Maybe that's something you'd like to do today. To rededicate your life, recommit yourself to the Lord Jesus and to His purposes. May we be on fire for God. May we always realize that there's somebody counting on us. Maybe we don't even know who that is yet. Maybe this coming week there's somebody who's going to need you in some way. And God's going to reveal that to you at some point during the week. That's exciting, isn't it? It really is. No, we don't cherish these situations that sometimes are dire. But at the same time, if He's enabled us, may we be up for the call. Maybe that's your decision today. Right where you stand, you don't have to come forward. Just say, Lord, I want to be more committed to be available when you, you call my name. You put me in a situation, wherever it is, I want to be your ambassador. We'll stand and sing. You let it be known, and may God receive all the glory. Hope and pray that each of you experiences a very good week, a week of being in Christ and knowing it and experiencing the joys of service in ways that we can and should reach out in his name. May this be indeed a time in which we realize that God is very much at work. He is not abandoned us and rather he's right here with us. And we have evidence of that here this morning as the Holy Spirit has been present with us and he will go with each of us as we leave this place. And may that be the case. I'm going to pray the scripture here this morning. May we all trust in the Lord. May we all trust in him and not in our own understanding. May we all acknowledge his ways. May we understand that as we do that, he will direct our path. Father, thank you, God, for being there with us and for us along life's journey. May we know with all assurance that your Son, Jesus Christ, is risen and is coming again. And so until that time, may we, as we have life on this earth, share the gospel, the good news, with everyone through what we think, what we say, and yes, what we do. In his name we pray and go. Amen.